Ali, thank Hello. you. Hello, Bernard. Thank you for your time, for our interview. We love to do an interview with you for Momander. Especially and in this place. Especially in this place. So place. we are here on yes. Lake Kimsey, Fraunensel. Yes. And we had a beautiful day today. And yes. so we want to use the time and interview you about your new book and about all the new things that's going on. So thank you for your timing. Thank you for being here with me. Mm -hmm. Happy to. Happy to. So my first question is, for those among our audience who do not know your work, could you provide a short description of what you do and how you have come in contact with Crying, a spirit entity from whom you have received many channeled messages through all the years you are working with them? It's a, it's a big long question and I'll try to make it as short as answer as possible because people ask this all the time. I'm a channeler and many times channeling is seen as uh, very strange and very odd and very weird. Uh, the truth of the matter is it's like talking to an angel and there's been a lot of history, a lot of scripture about talking to angels. Uh, this is not what I expected to do in my life. I am an engineer, as you know, and in my engineering background, as I'm very skeptical, very skeptical of anything esoteric. And so all of this had to happen slowly and carefully, and I had to have good proof that a human being can actually be in touch with the other side of the veil. And so in this and what happened in to me, it, it, it happened 28 years ago. It seems like uh, a, another generation. And in this time, my engineer brain was convinced God got bigger for me. And then the world started to open up and then the channeling started to come in and the beautiful information told us about a shift that is coming. It even told about weather that was coming. And all of these years, then I have been following this path of uh, enjoying the channeling, but also paying very attention, being as pure as I can. And that has now become my life. Wow. <laughs> Cool. A really, really <laughs> busy life you have. You're traveling all around the world. Yes, yes. Every weekend in another country. Wow. And in the States, uh, we do maybe, th well, we do 35 weekends a year. Wow. Just, just, just in the States the and just Canada. Just in the States. Yeah. So we're glad that you're in and Europe. And then we get to time. come in Europe <laughs> as often as possible. Okay. Thank <laughs> yes, you for that. Right. Thank you're you for welcome. that. So, um, for nearly 30 years you have traveled around the world, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. You have spoken at the United Nations six times and you spread crimes messages. What do you think have we been able to drive change in our social thinking? Thank you for asking that. I don't drive anything. I, uh, crying is information only. Crying talks about what is going on, tries to give uh, help and comfort, tries to tell about the new paradigms, what is different than it was before, uh, what might be coming to help people who are esoterically minded. Now, the people at the Un United Nations were not necessarily esoterically minded. So that was a challenge. And how to actually channel to a group of delegates, it, it was closed to the public, so it was uh, the delegates and the employees of the United Nations who were there. And Cryon uh, opened up and he said, there's going to be shifts and changes that you never expected. They're going to be different. Um, he even suggested a council of wisdom from the indigenous at the United Nations. Um, he told them to tell everything you know about ETs. <laughs> so he said many generic kinds of things that you wouldn't necessarily say to esoteric people. It was, it was really interesting to be there. But in general, what Cryon does, whether it's at the UN or whether it's in a conference or anything, is information, loving information about us and what's coming. So I think that's a really important point because there are no rules. No. No, so no rules. It's a new age. Yes. It's a new time. Yeah. And there are no rules. No, no, nothing which is not allowed. So everything is. Free. I think that the most difficult thing is for people to accept the change, and uh, everyone's the same. Esoteric people, especially you've been esoteric for thirty years or more, you you have a mindset of the way things work, even with spiritual things, and that's changing. Mm -hmm. Would it make sense to most of us that if if the energy shifts, so will our relationship? Uh, to spirit and what we do and and how we do it that that has to shift too we cannot use the old rules even of spirituality in a brand new energy and expect them to work the same mm -hmm. yeah that's true right so your new book has come out in germany it has it's called the new human and in german it's called der neue mensch Great, congratulations to that thank you um, what can readers expect from this book what topics are addressed by crime? The topics that are there are all about the evolution 
that it's coming for humanity. And we think of evolution as, uh, you know, you, <laughs> you start like this and you get like this, or you're going to grow another arm <laughs> or a bigger brain. And that is not what is going on here. The evolution truly is about wisdom how we think and crime then has given channel after channel of what would it be what would look different to humanity and how the evolution will then show itself and he talks he starts with children he talks about the differences we're already seeing and how they behave and and how they behaved uh for our parents and our grandparents and when they had the children and and, and how different this is uh, it goes on to ev it, it, something called uh, ev uh, evolutionary DNA mm -hmm. and how the DNA itself will change. Um, and then we have a very special section and people have asked, well, why did you include it? And it's channels when we were in Israel because Kryon has said, peace on earth is going to have to start in Israel. Mm -hmm. that, that, that this is something that is going to be uh, evolutionary for them. The Israelis themselves have to start thinking differently about who surrounds them, what has happened in the history, what they're going to do. And so I've included that in the book too. I think it is a profound information for the world to hear. So the book is about what's going to happen literally with our consciousness and our minds, wisdom, how we act, how we relate to others. Mm -hmm. The shift of paradigms can be sensed and felt everywhere. This, is, this year in July, Kram spoke about the old and new thinking in politics and companies. Mm -hmm. And he said that hierarchies will not be necessary anymore. What is the alter alternative? We, uh, an alternative to the way we are working right now is, is not conceivable. We, we cannot think past the way we've done things. And uh, this is one of the things Crying continues to say is uh, an expression in English. You don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so what is it that's coming that can replace something we believe is very necessary? And Crying starts to talk about what it is going to be, not that we're going to understand, but imagine for a moment a company or even a political organization that doesn't need to have a hierarchy of this person has to say this, can give permission to this, and then finally it goes down to action. What if the ones who are responsible get it simultaneously? Because the information happens all at once, and so instead of having to ask permission for your boss to make a change, you make it. And then you go to your boss and he says, thank you for making it, mm -hmm. because I knew you were going to ask. <laughs> this is a different consciousness. Uh, I especially like the idea that our politics is going to change. Okay. It's the same all over. And, and we always have the same problems. And the problem is it gets so big, it gets dysfunctional. And then you look at it and go, how can we possibly accomplish anything? What if there is a, a, a more harmony there and a, a confluence, they say, of, uh, of understanding? Mm -hmm. that would allow then for them to receive information simultaneously and it would be harmonious and they'd go oh that's correct this is what we need to do and then it becomes so much easier when they see the sense of it mm -hmm. so it's um, an increase in common sense and and less fighting over the the things that the people want just because they're a certain party one way or another so there are certain things that are good for us and we'll see that and there'll be a commonality of interest coherence coherence yes so coherence all over the world and coherence is, all over the this world is, this is yeah. the aim and all people should try to to reach it you know can i say if you if you ask your grandfather or his grandfather what what earth was like during the, the war years and before the war years, mm -hmm. there were war years. Mm -hmm. we've, had, we've had 70 years now where there's a consensus, a coherence on this planet that we want peace. And we have done it. And now we're, we are on uh, in, an interesting path because this obviously is what we want. We don't want to go back into the old ways. We don't want to remake the war again. And, and we're doing our best not to. That's already begun. Mm -hmm. And you can see this is not something brand new. So we've laid the groundwork, I think, now for a very peaceful Earth. Maybe an Earth that would never go to war again. Hopefully. It's, 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 going, to be, it's going to take a generation or more. But you can tell it's, it's on the way. Okay. The consensus is here. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. It's coming more and more. Yes. Yeah. yes. What can huh. we do as individuals to cope with the energetic shift? This may be... Um, Part of an answer to another question too. Stay out of fear. Stay this is the fear. biggest one I can tell you too. To say, stop watching the news. If it if it inter inter interrupts your dinner, it, some people watch the news during dinner. I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, what else can you do to interrupt your digestion? Okay. You know, like, oh, sure. 
the news is going to give you the worst possible news all over the world every time you tune it in. And because there's else no this is what this is the way it works. Yeah. And so you have to understand there's a whole other side to what is going on. There's some beautiful, beautiful stories on this planet of, of wonderful things happening, and you're never going to see it on the news. At least not yet. That's mm -hmm. part of the consciousness shift okay. that the book the book will even talk about. And so First, number one, stay out of fear, fear because the fear is going to, I call it, beat us up. It's going to make us worry, gives us anxiety, it affects us with other people, and we're never going to see the sense of a better world when we're always afraid. So that, that's probably the first thing. Do we have a second thing? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got a whole list. <laughs> let, let us know the second thing. I want to know, I, is there God inside you or not? I mean, sure. this is this is the this is a big question, yeah. and uh, most people would say, well, yeah, because I believe in the afterlife. Well, if you believe in the afterlife, that means that in this current life, something has to be in with, with you that's going to carry you to the afterlife. What what is that? And I say, okay, it's all right. God is in me, and this, by the way, is the wisdom of the ancients. This is the wisdom of the Buddhists and of the Hindu long before we got modern uh, systems. And so I would, that's the next question. Is it real to you? And if it is, what are you going to do with it? And this is where we get excited because the evolution will say, we're going to start to embrace it and re at least recognize it. And that's not just esoteric people. That's everyone. Mm -hmm. So at some level, an, an evolving humanity is one that's going to say, oh, there's something inside me that's bigger than me. And it's, it's, I want to know more about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's part of the evolution. So that that'd be number two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and and you know when you get into three and four, it has to do with um, how compassionate are you. Mm -hmm. Then you start asking these questions: uh, Do you have enough compassion to care, really care about the people around you, or do you do you stay in a box and mm -hmm. just survive? You know. So these th these things are starting to evolve. There's a lot of compassion that you're starting to see on the planet, where people are helping other people and never would before. Uh, that's that's just part of what we talk about. Okay. Yeah. Great. Great. So, thank you for your time. You're thank welcome. you for our first interview <laughs> we've done together. Yeah. It was really a pleasure for us, and thank you for the great information to share with us. And we'll see you again. See you again on the camera. On the camera, right? Yeah. Tomorrow we will have a great crying excursion. Oh and a yes. Great seminar. Yes. Thank, thank you. you.